Hello everyone, it's me, Maddie's Masquerades. You might remember me from such panels as Banjo-Kazooie from Dream to Switch and the unbiased history of 4Kids Entertainment, Rumors Debunked. Today, we'll be going over the female side of the most influential franchise in gaming with the leading ladies of Mario, bosses, players, and former damsels. For this panel, we will be going over the important female representation in the Super Mario Brothers franchise in rough order of release date. I'll be touching on their very first appearance, even if said appearance made them a damsel. But from then on, I will not be including them in any other game in which they are a damsel, or even a random NPC, unless said NPC made a big splash. I will, uh, or spent a significant amount of time with the main character or characters. I will be going over the big sports and multiplayer franchises like Mario Kart and Mario Party, but I'll just gloss over them if they didn't bring anything notable to the table. I will not be going over characters from spin-off franchises, such as Donkey Kong Country or WarioWare, unless a female character born of the Mario franchise appears in those games, or a character from those games gets a role in the Mario games. For the purpose of discussing the franchise evolution, I won't be going over anything customizable, meaning no Super Mario Maker games, no Miis, and no fan mods. Also, I won't be discussing ports, remakes, or re-releases, such as Super Mario Advance or the recent Super Mario RPG remake, unless said re release changes a female character's presence. Also, it's very important I say this. When it comes to transgender characters, such as Birdo and Vivian, I will end up quoting transphobically worded descriptions of them. This is for the purpose of canon evidence of the character's identity. I do not in any way condone the casual use of these terms on any trans person, real, fictional, living, or dead, but misquoting them would also be pretending these prejudices never existed. However, when I discuss a character in my own words, proper language will be used. Without further ado, it's time to start the panel. We will start in 1981 with the first Mario franchise game, Donkey Kong. The first lady of the Mario franchise, the original damsel, was Pauline. Originally, Nintendo had chosen Olive Oil from the Popeye franchise to play the damsel role, as the game was going to be based on the Popeye cartoon. However, developer Shigeru Miyamoto could not get the rights to the characters. Since the game was too far in development, they needed to create original characters. But if he had made sure all his T's were crossed and his I's were dotted, I wouldn't be here presenting this, would I? Let us fast forward about four years to the NES era with the original Super Mario Brothers. This character is arguably the most popular female character in the franchise, Princess Toadstool. The localized version of the game called her Princess Toadstool at this point, but she was always Peach in the Japanese version. This was done to match the mushroom theme of the game, theme of the games. In this panel, I will refer to her as Princess Toadstool until her name changes to Peach in the localized versions. 1988 brought us two entries, Super Mario Bros. 2 and 3. I'm sure we all know that Super Mario Bros. 2 was originally do a different game called Doki Doki Panic. Doki Doki Panic was only released in Japan, with the game being reskinned as Super Mario Bros. 2 in the West due to the Japanese Super Mario Bros. 2, known in the West as Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, being seen as too similar to Super Mario Bros. 1 and also being extremely difficult. However, I thought you would like to know that this is the first playable appearance of Princess Toadstool, and the Mario franchise's first playable appearance of any female character. The princess replaced a character known as Nina. Luigi also replaced a character known as Mama, but we're not done with this game yet. Uh, so, in, so Birdo was not only the first female boss in the franchise, but also likely gaming's first transgender character. The manual for the game said, and I quote, he thinks he is a girl and he spits eggs from his mouth. He'd rather be called Birdetta or Catherine in the Japanese manual. Super Mario Bros. 3 introduced us to Wendy O. Koopa, the first female boss in a Mario game that was always meant to be a Mario game. Then, in 1989, the Game Boy launched, and with it, Super Mario Land. It was a Game Boy launch title. This game introduced us to Daisy, 
Princess of Saras Land. She was originally just a palette swap of Toadstool. The usual division was a lot less hands-on with this game, so a lot of it was intentionally different. The team that worked on the previous games had less input on this game compared to the previous titles, but later on, Daisy would get her time to shine. But for now, let's explore games from the 1990s. We're entering a whole new decade with a whole new console, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The era begins with Super Mario World, which was a launch title for the SNES. In this game, Wendy returns to the box. In 1991, we close out the NES era with our first spin-off franchise, NES Open Tournament Golf. While I did say I would not cover spin-off franchises, Characters that originated in the Mario franchise are present in this game. I'm discussing this because Toadstool and Daisy appeared as caddies for Mario and Luigi in the game. This is the first time the Mario franchise would include sports in their games. Plus, it's the start of many things to come, although we're not going to see Daisy again for a while. One of those things to come came in 1992 with the first official sports game, Super Mario Kart. A thing to come from that was Princess Toadstool, who as of today has appeared in Super Mario Kart and all of the Mario franchise sports type and multiplayer games. Now we'll skip four years forward to close out the Super NES era with Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. Although she started the game as a damsel, Princess Toadstool is playable. This makes her the first female character in a one playable character in a one player Mario game that was originally meant to be. Birdo returns after an eight-year absence as a boss, as does a new boss, Queen Valentina. Now we'll start on the N64 era. Super Mario 64 retconned Princess Toadstool to Peach with its intro note. For the rest of the panel, I will refer to her as Princess Peach. Out of the gate on the N64, we had Mario Kart 64 and the start of the Mario Party franchise, where Peach was playable, but things got more interesting in 1999. We were introduced to Mario Golf on the N64 in the Game Boy Color. This game featured not only Peach, but also several other female characters, including Grace, Plum, Azalea, Sherry, and Maple. However, we never see Plum or Maple again, and Grace, Azalea, and Sherry would only appear once more later. It said that this was because of an attempt to add more human characters in, into these multiplayer games. We're closing in on the end of the N64's lifespan with Mario Tennis, Mario Party 3, and Paper Mario. Mario Tennis was also released on Game Boy Color. Mario Tennis is a big one. Daisy returns with her first playable appearance, and her first overall appearance in nine years in her breakout role. She'd appear a lot more later on, and she was part of the attempt at human representation in these kinds of games. According to a 2008 interview with Camelot, she replaced a character that looked like, and I quote, Wario dressed up as a woman. Wall said character was rejected for being not cute. This is not the infamous Wall Peach that's been circulating the internet lately. We'll open up that can of worms later. Birdo also returns in her first playable role, and the manual correctly uses she, her pronouns, cementing her gender identity. Also, there's a bunch more one-time characters in Nina, Kate, Pam, Beth, Joy, Faye, Sammy, and Emily. Only Emily ever appears again. Daisy was also added to Mario Party 3, and she would appear in more Mario Party games to come. 2000 was also the release of Paper Mario. Here, Mario joins up with several traveling companions, including Lady Bo, Bomet, Sushi, and Watt. The game also features Bowser's right-hand baddie boss, Kami Koopa. Also, I'm just going to say this now. Watt is a female. Sometimes the translation slipped in the localized version and called her a male, but she is a canon female. Huh? <laughs> Moving onwards, the GameCube era begins with Super Smash Bros. Melee. Princess Peach makes her Super Smash Bros. debut. She retains her gliding ability and her radish tossing ability from Super Mario Bros. 2, which carried over from her replaced character in Doki Doki Panic. Then Peach appeared in Mario Kart Super Circuit on the Game Boy Advance, and she and Daisy were in the next two Mario Party games. Here, I'm going to veer over to Super Mario Sunshine for a moment. 
This game introduced the race of characters, the Noki. It's a, you'll see why I highlighted them later. Huh? He had some bangers in 2003 as well. Uh, starting with Mario Golf, Toadstool Tour. This was Daisy and Birdo's debut on the golf course. Uh, but a bigger example was Mario Kart Double Dash. Daisy and Birdo were inducted into this franchise here, totaling four female characters in this series. Yep, I said four. Toadette makes her debut here. Also, according to the Japanese website for this game, Yoshi and Birdo are a canon couple, and the latter's transgender identity is still canon. And I quote, Birdo looks like Yoshi's girlfriend, but is actually his boyfriend. This year also included the Mario and Luigi series with Superstar Saga. Kakaletta is the first female big bad in a Mario game. Birdo returns and appears as a boss. This time, and for the first time in a one-player game, her role isn't 100% antagonistic. Wendy returns as a boss, too, for the first time since Super Mario World 13 years ago. Other bosses in the game include Queen Bean, Mom Piranha, Jojora, and her friends. In 2004, we get more sports games. Toadette joins Mario Party 6, and Birdo leaves Mario Pow Party Power Tennis, but that's not the only thing with that game. It seems some one-offs and an attempt to make Lightning Strike Twice were in play with Mario Power Tennis. One of those one-offs was Potato, but there were only two more games with the one-offs anyway. This was probably the beginning of the end for those. But of course, there was the infamous Wall Peach, who, contrary to popular belief, was rejected because they had no one to pair her with, not because she was too ugly. That rumor may have been mixed up with the female Wario bit from Mario Tennis 64. And speaking of one-off, Mario Golf Advanced Tour was the last of them in a golf game. Siri, Grace, and Azalea returned from Mario Golf 64, with Ella making her one and only appearance, and Daisy and Birdo taking a break from the golf course. The Paper Mario franchise continues with Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. Mario's got some more traveling companions in Goombella, Flurry, Mrs. Mouse, and Vivian. Vivian's sisters Marilyn and Bedlam appear as bosses, with Cammy Koopa returning and another female big bad in The Shadow Queen. Also of note, Vivian is a transgender woman as well. In the Japanese version, the party description was Vivian appears to be a girl but is really a boy, and Gubella and Professor Frankly described her as a youngest sister or brother. She was teased by her sisters about being transgender, which was changed to her being ugly or pug ugly in the localized version. Here, the Japanese version referred to her with appropriate transgender pronouns, regardless of how else they were wording this. She's the first playable transgender character in a one-player Mario game. The trigger warning ends now. Going forward, there will be no more transphobic descriptions for the rest of the panel. 2005 had quite a bit going on. During this year, we got saw character development and role reversals in the main characters, ladies, and bosses. Two new sports franchises were introduced with Mario Superstar Baseball and Super Mario Strikers. Both featured our playable ladies, Peach, Daisy, and Birdo. Birdo would also be inducted into Mario Party 7 that year, but she and Toadette would leave the Mario Kart crew for now in Mario Kart DS. Toadette herself was still busy, though. It seemed they wanted her to have other leading roles, like hosting Mario Party Advance, or owning a hotel in Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix. Mario Tennis Power Tour came out on Game Boy Advance, wrapping up its era. Daisy took a little break here, and whoa, that's a lot of one-timers. Uh, let me take a deep breath. There's Ace, Sophia, Meg, Sasha, Sylvia, Lindia, Linda, Kyoko, Mickey, Emmy, Paula, Tori, Barb, Mel, Minx, and Sherry. But this was it for the one-timers. But something else happened this year. Something that would change the Mario franchise forever. The Nintendo DS. And with it, Super Princess Peach. 
Not only is this the first one-player game where Peach was playable for a significant amount of time since Super Mario RPG, a nine-year gap, it's her first game and the first time a Mario game has a, had a female character in the lead. Now Mario and Luigi are the captured ones. The DS also gave us Mario and Luigi, partners in time. Once again, we got a female Big Bad in Princess Shroob and Elder Princess Shroob. Mrs. Swamp appears as a boss, and we're introduced to Baby Peach. 2006 was considerably lighter coming from that year, with just a sports game and a spinoff. We got a new sports game in Mario Hoops 3-on-3. Three three. In addition to our three regulars, this is the first Mario game to feature crossover characters. We got Dixie Kong from Donkey Kong Country 2, and the White Mage from Final Fantasy. The latter came from Square Enix working with Nintendo on this game for the first time since Super Mario RPG 10 years prior. Baby Peach also returns in Yoshi's Island DS, giving Yoshi a gliding ability. Guess where that came from? In 2007, we enter the Wii era with our standard crews in Mario Strikers Charred and Mario Party 8. Mario Party DS came out too, with Bird giving Birdo a rest and making Toadette host again. I guess he likes hosting more than participating in handheld titles? Uh. Regardless, a new series is born, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, starting with Beijing 2008. This is a full-on crossover that's directly part of the Mario franchise. So in addition to our regulars, Daisy and Peach, I'm highlighting Amy Rose from Sonic Adventure 1 and Blaze the Cat from Sonic Rush. Uh. Over on the one-player side, we got Super Paper Mario. Peach is playable again, but unlike for the first two Paper Mario titles, it's for a significant part of the game. We also have our traveling companions in Tippy, Tiptron, Harry, Dottie, and Piccolo, plus a boss in Mimi. Super Mario Galaxy came out too, introducing us to Queen Bee and Princess Rosalina. We also got a boss in Camilla. 2008 contained mostly sports games, as well as Super Smash Bros. Brawl, with Peach returning. We also got Mario Kart Wii, featuring Rosalina and Baby Peach joining the multiplayer crew. Baby Daisy makes her debut here, and Toadette and Birdo return to the circuit after being absent in the DS game. Mario Super Sluggers greatly expands its roster of characters. In addition to our regular three, the Babies and Toadette join the ball game. The Nokis make their multiplayer debut, and in addition to Dixie Kong, Tiny Kong from Donkey Kong 64 makes her Mario Bros. series debut. Things continue into 2009 with Mario and Luigi, Bowser's inside story. Here we're introduced to Starlo the Star Sprite who travels with Mario and Luigi. Two bosses also appear in the form of Dermite and Wisdom. Mario and Sonic also return to the Olympic Winter Games with Vancouver 2010. Our regulars return, as does Rouge the Bat from Sonic Adventure 2. She's the first female boss in a multiplayer or sport-related Mario game. But most of all, new Super Mario Bros. Wii is released this year. Wendy O. Koopa makes her 3D debut, appearing as a boss in a mainline Mario game. She does so for the first time since Super Mario World, which was released 19 years before this. Overall, that's six years since Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. 2010 only really gave us Mario Sports Mix, a sort of sequel to Mario Hoops 3-on-3, Three -three, also developed by Square Enix. The White Mage returns, but Birdo and Dixie don't. In 2011, we got Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games, but there were no major changes to the cast. On the 3DS, Mario Kart was released. Mario Kart 7 was released. Toadette, Birdo, and the babies left. In another case of a character using their original name, Queen Bee was now known as Honey Queen and joined Mario Kart 7. Now we've got another spin off series, Fortune Street, the first non Super Smash Brothers series since a uh, spin off series since NES Open Tournament Golf 20 which was 20 years ago, that wasn't directly based on an existing character from the Mario franchise. This game crossed over with Dragon Quest and was similar to Monopoly. Our three base regulars appeared in it. 
The 3DS also gave us Super Mario 3D Land. There, we were introduced to Pom Pom as a boss. During 2012, Daisy returned to the tennis court in Mario Tennis Open. Baby Peach joined the tennis game as well. The Wii era closed out with Mario Party 9, featuring the return of Birdo and the departure of Toadette. Two new Super Mario Bros. games were released as well. New Super Mario Bros. 2, and kicking off the Wii U era, is New Super Mario Bros. U. Wendy appeared in both of them as a boss. We also got Paper Mario Sticker Star. It was the first Paper Mario game not to feature a plethora of traveling companions, although Mario still had one in the form of Kirsty. Birdo also returned in the first one-player game where she isn't antagonistic at all, and the first overall since Superstar Saga nine years prior. Speaking of Mario and Luigi, they would return in 2013 with Starlow in tow. The Winter Olympics went to Sochi for 2014, and thus a new Mario and Sonic game with our usual four ladies and Rouge as a boss. Mario Party Island Tour debuted with Birdo leaving yet again, leaving only Peach and Daisy. But we also got Super Mario 3D World. It was a debut of the Sprixie Princess, who took over the damsel role from Princess Peach. She was playable for the first time in a mainline Mario game since Super Mario Bros. 2, a quarter century ago, making it her first mainline playable role in a Mario game that was always meant to be. In addition, Princess Rosalina was a playable character. Pom Pom returned as a boss. 2014 was a big year for our leading ladies, too. For starters, Mario Golf returns for the first time in 10 years. Back then, Rosalina just didn't exist, so she joins alongside Toadette. Daisy and Birdo also return to the golf course. Birdo, Rosalina, and Toadette appear as DLC in this game. It seems Advanced Tour was the last of the one-off humans. Speaking of Toadette, she gets her first playable role in a one-player game. Introducing another spin-off game, Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker. Ooh, but here comes a big one, Mario Kart 8. For the base game, at least, Toadette and the Babies Returned, with baby Rosalina making her debut. Pink Gold Peach is introduced as well, modeled after Metal Mario from Super Mario 64. Lastly, Wendy makes her playable debut and Honey Queen leaves. This game got a huge amount of DLC, so I'll fit each update into the timeline instead of discussing it all at once. And our next one is now. In the update named after The Legend of Zelda, Cat Peach is introduced, following a skin from Super Mario 3D World. The fourth Super Smash Brothers game was released for the 3DS and the Wii U, and Rosalina joined the Smash team. Wendy also joined as an alternate costume to Bowser Jr. from Super Mario Sunshine. In 2015, Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi crossed over in Mario and Luigi Paper Jam with Wendy as a boss. Mario Party 10 also debuted on the Wii U. We lost Birdo, but Toadette returned and Rosalina made her party debut. Rosalina also made her tennis debut in Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. Baby Peach was out, but the Sprixy Princess was playable for the first time here. Also this year, Animal Crossing crossed over with Mario Kart 8 in a DLC pack. The female villager joined the game alongside Isabel from Animal Crossing New Leaf. They're the first female crossover characters in a Mario Kart game. 2016 gave us Mario Party Star Rush. This game had the same four leading ladies as Mario Party 10. We were also introduced to Super Mario Run, the first Mario game for mobile devices. Peach, Daisy, and Toadette have been playable from the start. As of this panel, no character updates have been made yet. But if any new updates with a new female character come out, they will be covered in timeline order in a future presentation. When there's the Olympics, there's Mario and Sonic. For Rio 2016, Rouge joined the playable cast and was no longer a boss. Wendy and Rosalina joined the Olympics too, alongside Wave the Swallow from Sonic Riders and Stix the Badger from Sonic Boom. All of these characters were guest characters, only usable in certain events, with Peach, Daisy, Amy, and Blaze playable in all events. 
Wendy also made her non-crossover Paper Mario debut as a boss in Mario Color Splash, closing out the Wii U era. Now, onward to 2017, the 3DS gave us Mario Sports Superstars, a variety sports game. Peach, Daisy, Birdo, Rosalina, and Pink Gold Peach all appeared, alongside the playable debut of Pom Pom as a guest. Then we had Mario Party the Top 100, which included the same four characters as the last one. Most of all, we kick off the Nintendo Switch era with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, a port of Mario Kart 8, with all the previous DLC from the Wii U version. For the first time, a port added a new cast member, Inkling from Splatoon. Also on the Switch, Nintendo and Ubisoft collaborated for Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. As the title suggests, the game crossed over with the Rabbids from Rayman Raving Rabbids, as well as their own franchise. Peach was a fighter in this game alongside a rabid version of her making her debut. Toadette was also playable for short bursts, making this not only her first playable role in a one-player console Mario game, but also her first appearance in one. While I don't usually touch on random non-debuting NPC characters, I must mention Pauline in Super Mario Odyssey. She's been in a few games since the DK Arcade games, mostly the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series, but usually only as a damsel. This is her first role without being a damsel, and it catapulted her back into the spotlight. Uh, that notability continued into 2018 with her first playable role in Mario Tennis Aces. The Sprixy Princess left and Bruno returned. Super Mario Party finally changes its cast by dropping Toadette and introducing Pom Pom. That year also introduced us to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. As the tagline, everyone is here, implies, Peach, Rosalina, and Wendy return, the latter still on alt of Bowser Jr. Daisy joins the Smash Arena as well, as an Echo Fighter of Peach. 2019 gave us another first. Introducing New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, a port of New Super Mario Bros. U. For the first time in a one-player port, and the first time ever with one native to the Mario franchise, we have a new playable female in Toadette. It's the first major playable appearance of Toadette, and the first time she was playable in a mainline Mario game. It's also the first appearance of Peachette, whom Toadette can transform into. Toadette also joined the Olympics as a guest in Mario and Sonic at the 20 Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. Wave and Sticks dropped out for what appears to be the final curtain call for this subseries. The remaining characters kept their old roles from the Rio 2016 installment, with Rosalina, Wendy, R Rouge, and Toadette still as guests. On mobile devices, we got Mario Kart Tour, and I'm gonna skip the roll call for this one for now. The cast is just so big, well over 250 characters that even if I just list the females, I fear we might be strapped for time. I'll think about imparting them in, in a future uh, presentation somehow, and at the end of the panel, if anyone wants to suggest how, I'll take questions. But for now, let's move on to 2020, which gave us Paper Mario, the Origami King. Most of the characters in this game are referred to as It, but Olivia takes over a role previously held by Kiersey and Starlo, traveling with Mario for the whole game. Twenty twenty one also gave us Mario Golf Super Rush. Pauline joins the golf course for the first time, but Birdo leaves. She does rejoin Mario Party and Mario Party Superstars as Pom Pom leaves. In twenty twenty two, we got a new Mario Strikers game for the first time in fifteen years in Mario Strikers Battle League. Rosalina and Pauline join the game now that the former exists and the latter is in the spotlight. The Mario Rabbit series gets a sequel in Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope. Rabbit Rosalina and an original Rabbit known as Edge join. Bosses include Midnight, Bedrock, Daphne, and Dark Miss Edge. We're in the home stretch now. Onward to 2023 with a movie, a game, and some DLC. Here, since Nintendo was more hands on with it than they were with the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, I will be discussing the Super Mario Bros. movie. I'm about to give a spoiler for the movie, please cover your ears if you don't want it. 
Princess Peach played a major role in the movie, leading an attack on Bowser before Mario ever arrived at the Mushroom Kingdom. She even trained him there, and though she did kind of get kidnapped, she did so on purpose to keep Bowser away from the Toads, and it was part of a bigger plan by her. As for the games, we have Super Mario Bros. Wonder, with Peach, Daisy, and Toadette playable and selectable. It's the first one-player console appearance of Daisy, and the first time she's ever been in a mainline Mario game, or any one-player console game, since her debut in Super Mario Land, approximately 34 years ago. We wrap it up with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's DLC, known as the Booster Course Pass. Wave 4 gave us Birdo back, and Wave 6 gave us Pauline and Peachette. Oh wow, only 28 minutes. This came out to 40 in rehearsal. But anyway, there you have it. The leading ladies of Mario have come a long way, and there's much more to come. Princess Peach Showtime is due for a March 22nd release, for one. And that's all for now, and I'll open the floor to questions. <laughs> Or just applause. Uh, thanks. Yeah, well, I'm surprised this panel ended up being so short. I mean, as I said before, I, I rehearsed it and went up to 40 minutes. I hope I didn't talk too quickly. I have done that before. But uh, if there's no questions, uh, we'll end up the panel. Again, thanks for coming, and uh, I'll hit the stop button now.